Welcome to another edition of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A Plus certification training course. And in this particular edition, we're going to talk about expansion slots. This comes from the CompTIA exam objectives 220 601, where we're identifying the names, purposes, and characteristics of motherboards, and specifically talking about these expansion bus slots that are on our personal computers. We're going to learn about these different bus slot types PCI, AGP, PCIe, AMR, and CNR. And there's a lot of a lot of letters here that we aren't quite certain exactly what those are. That's exactly how they're written in the CompTIA certification information. We need to find out what those mean and what they're about. Let's start with PCI. PCI stands for Peripheral Component Interconnect. You will never hear anyone ever refer to it by that name. You'll always hear someone say, I need a PCI card. I need something that will fit into a PCI slot. I have a motherboard that has PCI slots on it. You'll never hear anyone talk about a peripheral component interconnect. Even if you saw that written somewhere in when you're trying to purchase a motherboard or a card, no one would know what that was. Everybody knows these slots by the term PCI. Now, there's a very early type of PCI that's called the standard PCI that runs at 33 megahertz and 32-bit bus width. Now, if you're wondering what these megahertz and what these bus widths are about, we have another video you can watch that talks about these bus architectures and what the bus bandwidth is like, what these widths of the bus are. That'd be a good reference if you need to go back and look at that. And that allows us to get 133 megabytes uh, per second of throughput. That's quite a bit of throughput in that standard PCI slot. But today, we need more. And so newer versions of PCI came out. And these newer PCIs allowed for both 32 and 64-bit cards that also ran at different voltages. The voltage signaling on some was 3.3 volt, and some it was 5 volt. So not only did we have different sizes of cards, they also run with different voltages. This created a little bit of complexity. But as you can see, it also increased the capacity of these systems, the throughput up to 266 megabytes per second on these 32-bit cards and up to 532 megabytes per second if you had a 64-bit card. But it had to be the right kind. Once we started getting up into these faster speeds, we found ways that it, to, to do more with less, which meant that in the latest version of this PCI specification, which happens to be version 2.3, the 5 volt adapters no longer supported. Everything is a 3.3 volt. There are some other types along there, but that gives you an idea of the, the changes that have happened with PCI over the years. If you look at your motherboard, you'll see the PCI slots. This comes from one of my server motherboards. It's got both 32-bit PCI slots. These are the two at the top. And I've got these longer PCI slots right here. Those are 64-bit slots. And you can see they're keyed a little bit differently as well, which means there's these little metal or little plastic spots in here so that you can only have a certain kind of card fit into those slots. Very important. I'll show you a little bit more of that in just a moment. Here, for instance, is a 32-bit expansion card. And this happens to be a modem expansion card. But you can see at the bottom how that keying works. If there's a slot right here on the card, that's a 3.3 volt signaling key pin. That means it'll work in a slot that supports 3.3 volt cards. Now this particular card will, will work in both 3.3 and 5 volt. And I know that because there's another key right here on the card that is the 5 volt signaling key pin. And that way I know this particular card will work in either one of those scenarios. In a 64-bit card, it's almost exactly the same way. The 3.3-volt keyway is in exactly the same place. The 5-volt keyway in exactly the same place, as long as the card supports both of those. And there's a big spacer there for the 64-bit card that allows you to push it out into the, the other side. Now, what's nice about these cards also is you'll find most of these 64-bit cards, even though they are 64 bits wide, you can put them also into a 32-bit slot. And it won't run at 64-bit. Obviously, it will only use 32-bit of bandwidth across the bus, but you can use it in either scenario. So if you have a card like this, make sure if you have a 64-bit slot available, make sure you put it in that 64-bit slot. Here's a different kind of interface. This expansion interface is called AGP. That stands for Accelerated Graphics Port. You'll sometimes hear it referred to as an Accelerated Graphics Port, but almost always we'll refer to it as an AGP slot. Now, most motherboards today use something called PCI Express. You won't see many people 
putting in AGP cards anymore, but there's still a number of motherboards out there that will support it. It's mostly used, as the name implies, with graphics adapters. And the reason that that particular interface was created was to give us additional throughput because video these days, especially with uh, 3D environments with video, with some of the nicer gaming systems, they need higher bandwidths for video. And so the AGP connected directly into the North Bridge so that you have a higher and faster speed bus to work with. Here's a, a detailed view of what those interface slots look like down at the bottom. You can see they're, they're a little lot, lot tighter together than a PCI slot is. And for that reason, sometimes they can be kind of finicky. That's why most of the AGP cards have this hook on the back side that allows them to sit very, very tightly into the slot so that you, you get it in there perfectly so everything lines up. Just like with the PCI cards, you'll find there are also different versions of AGP cards. And not only with the, the, the speed of them, the 1x, 2x, 4x, and 8x AGP, which are referring to the throughputs that we can run through there, they also run at different voltages. And I have some screenshots here so you can see where those slots are and how they're keyed to be able to use the different voltages. Now notice also that we've got different bandwidths. The AGP1X goes from 266 megabytes per second. The 8X speeds go up to 2.1 gigabyte per second. And what these are referring to are speed multipliers. Sometimes you'll hear them referred to as strobe multipliers. And that is the card working on its own between CPU cycles so that it will work two times as fast, four times as fast, or eight times as fast as the normal clock cycle of that bus. And that's because the AGP card has its own memory on board. It has its own processors on board. These video cards today are very, very smart video cards in the way they work. And because they're able to do that, you're able to get much faster throughput, much faster bandwidths out of those devices. Here's an example of what an AGP expansion slot might look like. And in this particular case, you can see the motherboard even has written on it AGP connection. So in, in looking at some of these older motherboards, you'll see these AGP slots crop up. And some may be different sizes, but you'll, you'll see that they're very standardized on where they are. And usually they're labeled exactly like that, where it will tell you it's an AGP connection. These days, what you'll start to see with video and other interfaces is something called PCI Express. And in this case, we'll call it PCIe. You'll often hear it referred to, talked about, and even written down today as PCI Express. Now, this is not something that was called PCI-X. That's a different type of interface. You don't really see PCI-X anymore. Almost always, you'll see PCI Express on systems. This isn't really what we've traditionally thought of as a bus. This is a different way of communicating. Instead of having this parallel pathway where all of the bits went back and forth all at once, this is called a serial bus. And we're, we refer to it often as serial lanes in the case of PCI Express. PCI Express will support 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, or 32 separate lanes of data. And you'll hear it referred to as a, a by 1, a by 2, a by 8, a by 16. And that's the proper nomenclature to use if you're ever talking about a PCI Express bus. The way that this works is a little bit different than the other. Unlike the, the standard PCI bus, the ISA bus, where all the traffic moved all at the same time across the bus, all in one direction or another, these lanes have a dedicated line going one direction and a dedicated line going the other direction. And the more lanes that you have, the more information that you can transfer at any time. And these PCI Express lanes, if we this is an example of having four separate lanes that can all communicate all simultaneously doing different things and sending them up. And because it's going so quickly and sending so much traffic, most of the time a PCI Express, almost all the time, you see it connected to the north bridge of your expansion architecture. The PCI Express throughput, look at these numbers. We were talking with smaller numbers before. Just a single lane of PCI Express will run at 250 megabytes per second. If you were able to find a system that would support 32 lanes of a PCI Express bus, you're getting 8 gigabytes per second. Most of the time when we're talking about video these days, the highest one I've seen so far is a 16, a by 16 and that will run at 4 gigabytes per second. That's a lot of communication running back and forth across that bus on a, on a motherboard in a system. This is how these PCI Express slots look. This is a 1 by right here. It's very small and very short. This is a 4 by system. It's a little bit. You can see it even on the motherboard, PCI EX4. And here's a larger one, the 16, 
a buy 16 up here, that's exactly where, for instance, we might plug in our video card so that we can run as fast as possible going into that north bridge. Here is what an expansion card might look like for PCI bus. Unlike those PCI cards we looked at before that had a lot of different, different interfaces on the bottom, this is a one by card. And you can see that it's it's got this tiny little interface at the bottom. That's exactly what we'd expect to see with PCI Express because, remember, we're not sending a lot of traffic over multiple parallel buses. This is a serial communication, and a single lane doesn't take up much real estate on the motherboard. If we want to start comparing what these different interfaces look like, here's an example. I, I created this chart based on those throughput numbers that we've been looking at so far. And it starts down here with ISA and goes back to the PCI E uh, by 1. And we go up to AGP. And notice we really start getting into higher speeds up here. Uh, even the AGP 8x, those are going quite fast. But these days, the fastest interfaces that we have on a motherboard, you'll see the PCI Express by 16. And if we can find a motherboard that will support a by 32, you can really start getting some higher speed throughputs out of that interface. One of the things that you may be asked for on the A plus exam, although you don't see them much on today's motherboards, uh, are these next two expansion types. The first one's called the AMR, the Audio Modem Riser. And it's a very specialized expansion slot. It's, it's designed so that you don't have to put audio and don't have to put modem technology on a motherboard. It was ideally so that the motherboard manufacturers wouldn't have to create so much technology and put so much on the board itself. And by putting an AMR slot, and here it is, this tiny little slot over on the left, we're able to later on, if we need a modem or if we need audio, to plug it directly into that slot. It was just another way to make things a little more streamlined. These days, it's very simple to add audio. These chips are very small today to put audio right on the motherboard. And you don't see many people using modems anymore. And so they'll often have a slot available for a modem. Or you just use a standard expansion slot for that. The other type you don't see much anymore is called a CNR, Communications and Networking Riser. And it essentially replaced the AMR. It had a little higher bandwidth. And it allowed us to put network cards in there as well. The interface itself looks a little bit different on the motherboard. It, it sort of looks like a PCI slot. It's very narrow. You can see the much smaller design as well. Networking cards and modems don't need a lot of bandwidth on the expansion bus. So they were able to keep them very small. But again, these days, most of our expansion slots are now uh, built in. This, this networking technology is built into the motherboard. And with the advent of higher speed USB connections, a lot of the needs for serial connections, modem connections have gone away as well. So in review, we've looked at a lot of different bus types. The peripheral component interconnect, we almost always call that the PCI. We looked at that, that accelerated graphics port, the AGP cards. The PCI Express, which you see a lot these days. And then the other two that you don't see a lot these days, the AMR for the audio modem riser and the CNR for the communications and networking riser. For many more A-plus videos, our message boards, and some study guides, you can always go to our website at freeaplus.com.